everybody. I'm back. And today I am here with Susan Edmondson, who is an award-winning quilter and mixed media artist. She has been teaching for Mancuso Show Management for so many years, and she's teaching a wearable art workshop tomorrow during our, our Create DIY Festival, as well as an embellishment workshop during the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival online next month. Um, Susan is inspired by nature and her classes are really designed to inspire her students. Um, she has been published in Somerset Studio Publications, Quilting Arts, and others, along with three segments on Quilting Arts uh, TV. Susan, so happy to have you here today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So Thank welcome you. to my studio. Yes, would you uh, like to show us around? Show us some show us some goodies in your studio. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, uh, there's lots of stuff in here. So two years ago, I built a my husband and I built a studio. It's in our backyard. And so it's been really nice. I have a place to come and play. So I have buttons, I have fabric, I have a little bit of everything out here. So let me just walk you around. Susan, There's while one. you're while you're walking around, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, I started out in art, just drawing and painting, and I've done that since I could hold a pencil or a paintbrush. And in college, I majored in art, and I did everything from drawing, painting, pottery, a little bit of everything, but no textile arts. I went to Queens College, and they did not have any textile programs there at the time. So after college, I kind of was stuck with, I was just overwhelmed with drawing. It was very detailed and time consuming. So I decided I wanted a quilt. And when I decided I wanted a quilt, I couldn't afford to buy one. So I thought, well, maybe I could sew some squares together. So anyway, that started this whole thing. So now I get to do all of it. I get to draw, I get to paint, I get to sew, I get to cut out pieces like paper dolls. And anyway, I do a little bit of everything. So here's some of my fabric over here. This is like my color wall over here with all my stuff. And here's a few of my quilts. You can see these as we walk around the room. Um, I've got uh, all of my quilts I have designed and all the ones that I have out, I've designed. I've done others also, but most of them I've designed myself. So this is my little sitting area where when I'm just stitching, because I do a lot of embroidery, that's really my main focus now. And when I'm doing the embroidery, I can sit here and I watch TV, I listen to music, hang out, whatever. Anyway, it's just kind of a fun area to sit. And these old chairs were my mom's, by the way. So <laughs> I've really enjoyed having those in here. That's very nice. That must be very special to have have her a, a part of a part of your studio room. Yes. In fact, most all the furniture in here is furniture that came from my mother's house. Uh, I lost both of my parents. I lost my dad when I was very young. And so I still remember him sitting in these chairs. So they mean a lot to me. And then this over here. I have a little gallery wall over here with some of my smaller pieces on it. Actually, these are probably some of my larger pieces. And then this is my little kid area. We have four grandchildren and they, I have a little table so they can paint and draw and color. And then I actually had them doing, we were making beads a while back. So I have <laughs> beads that they had made. But Susan, um, if we look back to there was a there is um, some handbags or, or pocketbooks in the with the Winnie the Pooh. What are those? <laughs> These are oh, this is just their little toy area. So and this little this little doll bed right here is one that's just like one my mom made for me when I was a little girl. It's a cigar box. It's um, spools and clothespins. That's, that's just so cute. Looked together and painted. So anyway, that was fun to make for me. So, and this is my one of my little granddaughters. I do a class on faces and that is her little portrait, one of them. Beautiful. She's three, She's three now. She doesn't exactly look like that, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a caricature. And so 
tomorrow I'm teaching the crazy quilt class and we're going to do crazy quilt necklaces and it's called artful crazy quilt necklace and then here is one of my I've been doing crazy quilting for many years so this is one of my larger this is a large crazy quilt that I may work on forever because I just keep finding things to stitch on it and then over here is where this is where I teach my classes when I'm doing Zoom. Uh, Zoom was a brand new thing for all of us this year. And I have to thank Mancuso for getting me into this because I really have enjoyed teaching the classes for you guys. And doing it via, via Zoom is much safer than being in person. So these, this is another one of my pieces. If you could show that, some of those. I like to do fabric books also. So this is one of my fabric books. And I was supposed to have been teaching this a while back, but of course that did not happen. So maybe in the future. So if you've taken one of my classes, and I know a good many people have, you can always put some of those pieces together and create your own little fabric book. So a lot of people ask me, what do you do with them? Because they're little, but I love little. So here are, this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. This is the, the Artful Crazy Quilt Necklaces. And I have several here that you can see. There's lots of detail on there. Uh, beading and ribbons and lace. Most of the lace and everything is hand dyed. And then for Mid-Atlantic, I'll be teaching this embellishment class, which is called the Wildflowers or Weeds. And these are some of the pieces we'll be doing for that. And this is one I taught a while back, which actually I think I taught this last year for Mid-Atlantic in, in Mid at Mid-Atlantic, which was the last in-person show I did. And this, I had it, I framed it in a shadow box frame. So any of these small pieces could be framed. And I think they're kind of neat that way. That way they're protected and everything. That's a great idea to, to frame uh, some of the small pieces that you can still, you know, hang them in, in the house without, you know, hanging right. just the, the fabric on the wall. That's nice. Right. And I have those for sale also in an art gallery also locally. And then I also do a few shows, a few small local shows, but these are the things that I sell and these are on my website, hand dyed threads, hand dyed lace, hand dyed fabrics, um, they're all available, SusanEdmondsonDesigns.com. That's great. So Susan, what do you do when you're not quilting? Um, well, I pretty much do that 24-7. <laughs> when I can. Uh, I love to cook. I love to garden when it's pretty. Right now it's cold here, so not doing much of that. So show these up here. And then um, here's some more of my pieces. These are three-dimensional. Um, I'm really into herb gardening. So since I like to cook, I do a lot with herbs. And um, then, of course, the kids. We have grandkids, the four grandkids, which really take up a lot of our time. So, it seems like a lot of your work is in, inspired by nature. Would you say that that is one of your biggest inspirations? Definitely, definitely. Uh, my dad raised birds. Uh, I mean, I'm talking a lot of birds, like probably over a thousand. And he died when I was very small. So birds are a big part of what I put in my work. There's usually a bird in it somewhere. And, but everything is pretty much nature. It's flowers, it's bugs, it's birds, it's something, bunnies, all of that stuff. So I grew up around a lot of animals and I've always enjoyed seeing them. I don't have any animals right now, but I've always enjoyed seeing the animals that are out there in the yard and everywhere. So and where do you, where are you from, Susan? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm a Southern girl. So born and raised, we live in Concord now, which is just North of Charlotte, 
we're maybe 30 minutes north of Charlotte. But it's um, our kids grew up here and we've enjoyed being here. It's not quite the hustle bustle of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. so. Is there anything else? Where, what about your, where's your sewing machine? Oh, well, here's one of them. I have several. <laughs> I'm a Bernina girl. So this is one that I sew on a lot. And this is a quilt that I'm working on right now. Uh, I like to incorporate handwork with, with the actual machine work. So this one has a lot of both on it. This one's called tail feathers. And I'm trying to get it finished quilted now, but not quite finished. I love the colors. Thank you. Yes, I love that. Uh, my favorite color is orange as I have orange walls in the studio. Part of them are anyway. And I really like that happy color. So I, I, think, it, I think it brightens everything up. And when we painted the studio, I was not here. And my husband had painted the uh, walls that are called burlap. And he said, well, I'm finished that. Do you want me to do the orange walls? And I was like, oh, okay, yes. Cause I wasn't sure it was gonna be a good color. And I came home and as soon as I walked into the studio it just made me happy and made me smile. And I thought, okay, we did the right thing. <laughs> it was right. I have the same in my kitchen. I have an, I, my walls, the walls in my kitchen are orange. And when we painted them, we weren't sure. And it's more like, it's a deep, deep orange but I loved it. Cause it makes you just feel like Hope, like sunny orange I mean that's yes. so I totally agree with you it's warm <laughs> and happy so yeah I love it orange. Is. So, it is. and this is one of my other quilts um this is one of my favorites this is a newer one that I finished and it's called wildflower meadow and then up on the top shelf are a lot of my mixed media pieces that I have done um I I did retreats on my own for seven years called Believe in Yourself, me and a friend, Christy Steiner. And she and I loved working with, together with those items. We did boxes. Everything had to be in some sort of a house, which was a box. So there's all there's book fabric books in all of those boxes. But it was just a fun thing to do. And we had a lot of fun doing it. So for our new, our, our new uh, textile artists, what is considered mixed media? Uh, mixed media can be lots of different things. I also teach surface design at John C. Campbell Folk School. And I, I get this question every single time I walk into the dining hall, what is surface design? And my answer is always anything you can do to a surface. And mixed media is kind of the same thing. So you can work with paper, you can work with fabric, you can work with paint, um, anything, even you can glue things on. And I'm very careful about that because some quilters, you know, the thoughts of gluing anything onto a surface just kind of freaks them out. But there are certain glues that work really well, but it's just fun to work with those things. And like the boxes that I did, all of my fabric books can go in a box. So for me, it incorporates everything that I've ever learned in the art world. I get to draw, I get to paint, I get to glue, I get to cut out pieces, and then I get to stitch them either on the machine or by hand or both and attach beading, any kind of charm, everything. So, so it sounds very three-dimensional, three-dimensional yeah. art. Yes, very three-dimensional and very tactile. So my quilts, I used to work for Harley Davidson and one of the guys that I worked with, it was funny. He said, I want to see your quilts sometimes. So I took one in one day and it was maybe about this big. It was maybe eight, 10 inches square. And he said, that won't fit my bed. And I said, I never said my quilts fit beds. <laughs> so, it's a common misconception, isn't it? <laughs> a, quilt, a quilt is three layers and no size is, is right any size is right so that was funny he looked at me really funny like that's not like my grandmother made <laughs> <laughs> well is there anything else you'd like to show us today in your studio uh, well let's, let's walk over here so here's a few more let's show this up these are some more of my little things i started a series a few years ago when i was trying to sell my mom's house 
because all I could think about for months was house. And actually, it took forever to sell it. It's, the market was very different then. And so I had all these little house quilts that I worked on. And then this is one of my fabric books that's in a box. So here are, so this one's mixed media. This one's very mixed media. So I have paper, I have quotes and little poems and things from famous artists. And then you can write on your fabric with certain types of pen. So I have wool, I have cheesecloth, I have hand dyed trims, I have hand painted canvas. This is hand painted batting, which I call paint dyed batting which was one of the things I did on Quilting Arts TV some years ago. So this one was called Passionate Roots. And I, I use old tea bags, needle felting. So, and more stitching on the painted batting. Do you think that you'll teach your grandchildren to sew and to quilt? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I would like to because... Uh, I think it's something that I would like to pass on, uh, especially especially the mixed media part of it. My son is also an artist, so I'm hoping that I can get him and his children to do some of that. Um, the two little girls that we have, they're, they're only three, but their dexterity is incredible. So I'm trying to get them into, I've got big plastic needles, so hopefully I can get them to sew something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be fun. And that'll be certainly something that, you know, the, they can, you know, they can be with you and it'll be a nice rewarding experience if, right. if you're not, you know, pulling out your hair. So yeah, well, <laughs> my grandmother used to just let me play. She never really taught me to sew, but she just let me play in her sewing area. And mm -hmm. I think that was maybe a good thing. If I had been forced to make a dress or whatever, I don't, think I would have gotten that interested but she would just let me play and I just loved her colors of thread oh I just she had a box of thread that I just loved to just look look at you know so it was that's yummy. really nice that's really special but before we sign off today uh Susan what does the word create mean to you oh uh I love that word um and I love words that have to do with art create means anything that you can make with your hands and people are very I hear this all the time when I'm teaching they say oh well mine doesn't look like yours mine's not as neat as yours none of that really matters the main thing is that you are having fun and you're creating something that you're enjoying and you're working with your hands. And I think that's all very important. And I think the quilters and the artists out there today during this awful COVID pandemic are the ones that are thriving a little bit more because at least we, for me, it's been time to kind of regroup and it's like, oh, I even got to clean up the studio. So, <laughs> you know, things like that, that I've been able to do. I've been able to finish projects that had been laying around for a couple of years. I finished several big quilts that had been laying around. And so for me, creating is just a passion and it's it's not a forced thing. It's something I do 24 seven. If I'm not working on something, I'm thinking about working on something, so. That's amazing. And I think you're probably not alone in, in thinking thinking like that, I think. I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers today are, are in the same boat as you, as we all are, and, uh, you know, just enjoying uh, creating their, their art. Well, it's, thank it's you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I've loved being with you guys today, and I hope to see you in a, in a future class maybe sometime. Yes, definitely. Um, if anyone out there is interested, Susan has space in her class for Mid-Atlantic. Um, the, uh, the weeds and posies and wildflowers workshop. If you want to register, you just go to www.quiltfest.com and click on Susan Edmondson's name in the instructors. And you can see in the description for the workshop and you can sign up there. We want to thank Tim for being a great cameraman today. Thank <laughs> you so much. That's my and, husband. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Susan, thank you so much for, for coming on today and showing us your workspace. You're welcome. Thank you, Diana, and thank you, Quilt Fest, and thank you, Mid-Atlantic. We are excited about being there, well, being there virtually again, and you, Mancuso shows are fabulous. So if you haven't signed up for one before, you need to. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Everybody, we still have a, a good amount of uh, live events today. David Mancuso is going to be back on um, later this afternoon with uh, Galen Gibson Cornell, as well as Susan Else. That'll be going on um, this afternoon. So just come back to Facebook Live or check or check out our website and you will find out, um, find the live stream um, there. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Yeah.